Hi, I'm James Baker, founder of James Baker and Associates and international tax expert slash entrepreneur. And this clip you're about to see is from our last Ask Me Anything. If you want to ask me some questions, I come on live Wednesdays and Thursdays as much as I can. You can join with the link in the description below. I'd love to see you there, but let's get to the clip. Do you ever help with startups needing a 501c3? It is for a new children's home in Mexico. We needed to receive donations and give tax receipts. So this is a great question. So I'm going to explain right now a little bit about how nonprofits work, the 501c3s, how they work in the U.S. So in the U.S., a, a nonprofit is basically a regular corporation that receives approval under code section 501c3. And there's a couple of different sections in the same little in the same region um, that they grant different levels of non-taxability. There's public charities, there's private foundations, and they have different forms that are required to be filed based on what you're applying for. This is, I think, applied for on the form 2300. And it's really, like I said, you open a U.S. Corp and then you fill out an application to have it have tax exempt status. And then you have to operate it in a very specific manner to maintain that tax exempt status. Only a U.S. registered foundation can give the tax receipts to um, people in the U.S. So if I, as a U.S. citizen, donate money to a Mexican charity, it's not tax deductible for me. The Mexican charity has to be registered in the U.S. for me to get a tax deduction. So that's why many um, foreign charities can register in the U.S. or they can just open a new nonprofit branch in the U.S. Things are very nuanced and complicated with nonprofits where you need specific, it's harder to open bank accounts. And there's just a lot of rules with how you operate because there's a lot of, on, on the very large scales, there's a lot of abuse in nonprofits. Most recently, um, I don't know. I don't know much about it, but look up the the NRA, the the rifle, the gun, the pro gun lobby. It's like a nonprofit, I believe. I'm not an expert in this, but basically, the owners and the guys running the NRA were just completely abusing it and paying themselves a ton of money and buying all kinds of stuff they were just using personally and just abusing the funds that were being donated, giving way too much to politicians. And just being really messy and, and i think they got in a lot of trouble i read a couple i half read a couple articles about it but that, there's a lot of that happens on the higher levels so that makes it harder for smaller people to to do that you know a lot of people want to just not pay taxes so they open a nonprofit, but it's way more complicated than that um it's a great tool for the uh ultra wealthy or for the people that want to obviously solicit donations and give tax receipts and help out um that's like for a children's home generally my clients are more uh, the wealthier people who want to have like a side thing or entrepreneurs who want to use it for the ad grants or whatever. Um, there's a lot of reasons to open a nonprofit. It's just a, another tool, another thing, but there's a lot of requirements to, to getting it set up and to get it running. And the big, the big difference here is that um, in order to give tax receipts to Americans, it needs to be registered with the IRS. If it's a U.S. Um, nonprofit, you can do the the EZ form, which is faster, and you can do it online. But you're limited to fifty thousand dollars of donations over the first three years, so it's 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 a little bit limited, and how you can operate. So, um, I do help with this, and I can help uh, establish and set up nonprofits. I don't work a ton with with big nonprofits and operating them. I am working with one, uh, the Jason Aristisabal Foundation. I guess it's fine to promote it. I've been helping them on a nonprofit um, foundation, and they've been helping um, dis kids with disabilities in Cali, Colombia, just get more care because in some of the 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 less off, well off neighborhoods out there, there's no support for disabled children. So whether you're building home for children in Mexico or whether you're um, helping kids, children with special needs and in, in poor communities in Colombia, I think it's great work. And I'm happy to, you know, talk to you about potentially helping, you know, set this stuff up for you. And, uh, you know, thanks for doing that. That's really great. You know, I mean, that's an aside, right? <laughs>